welcome. So guys, it's a new year. It's a yes, new we season. made it. It's a new, what's that song? It's a new season. Yes, it's a new day. It's a new day. Yeah. <laughs> a fresh, fresh a new day. It's coming it's my way. My way. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> fresh anointing. That's what we want. That's yes. what we want. That's right. It's fresh anointing. Yeah. Yes. And prosperity. I don't know why I'm trying to sing because, you know, I can't. But. <laughs> You're too good. You sound good. You can hold a note. <laughs> Hey, there's oh, a lot of people like who one, can't hold a note. Let yeah, one note. Just, just that one note. One note. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so yes, guys, that's it. Oh this Lord. Is Happy 2022, everybody. Bye bye, 2021. Wow. Yes. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. It is, oh my gosh, it's been like 21 years since 9 11 happened. I can't believe yes. it's been that long. I know. I love it. Like, it's that's like timing sweet. waiting for nobody. I know. Oh my gosh. I started thinking back to like when I graduated from college, when I started college, I was like, oh my gosh. It's like the time is hmm. really not waiting for anybody. But if anybody is excited about the new year, just just the time, just to be where is that? I wish I had some confetti. I'll throw it up in the air. I don't have I know, any. right? <laughs> we have our delicious winter wonderland backgrounds, you guys. Yes. It's freezing outside. So, you know, <laughs> have these backgrounds up for the, like, the winter. It's, like, so cold outside. But I'm excited um, that we're actually all able to make it here tonight. So welcome, 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 everybody listening live tonight, everybody listening on the recording on YouTube. Welcome to you as well. Um, we want to encourage you that if you are listening live to definitely drop a little, um, a little hello in, um, in the chat, in the comment, whatever they call it. I guess it would be the comment section because it wouldn't be the chat, it would be the comment section. Let us yes. know you're here and, you know, hit us up with your questions, your comments. And um, if we can, we will um, be able to, you know, mention them online. So without further ado, because this is a new year, because this is a new month, because this is a new season, because this is a new day, we have, of course, a new theme. And our theme is... You guessed it. New year, new you. Right? Yes. <laughs> new year, yeah. new you. And of course, we have um, subtopics for every week of this month. And this, um, for, so for the four weeks, we have new mindset, we have new hearts, and we have new relationships, and then we have new walk. And all yes. of those things should actually lead up to you having like a new walk. Um, Amen. So again... This is what we, this is why we do work the true. We want to we want to um, elevate ourselves so that we can advance God's kingdom. That's really the slogan. Yes, oh, I, need to yes. Write that down. I really like that. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> we never really said it like that before. But that's what we want to do. We want to elevate yes. ourselves so that we can advance God's kingdom, right? So we have yes. to, to do that. You know, we're gonna start off with a new mind. Everything begins in the mind so yes um our mother of worth the true is going to be kicking things off tonight that's going to be miss asher brown she's going to be enlightening us and elevating us on a new mindset everybody so just tune in your minds <laughs> ready we don't know what with minister, minister evangelist elder astrid brown is gonna is gonna have for us tonight but Let's just get ready. Just buckle your seat belts. We're going for a ride right now. <laughs> we are definitely going for a ride. So like Tony already beautifully stated, um, you know, we have our own Worth the True page. So you can spread the word around. You can join at any time. If you miss the, the videos, the videos stay up on the page. So you can always go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. Um and, and like she also said, also, we have a YouTube channel, and it's also under Worth the True. So we are starting New Year, New You. And what better um, way to start a new year, but with a new mindset. Amen. Amen? With a new mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I'm going to read, uh, there are going to be little scriptures here and there. Um, the first scripture I'm reading is Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Um, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who brought it in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and made it in the likeness of men. So the very first thing, and that's what, um, there's so many um, scriptures that speak about mind and your mindset and keeping your mind. And guess what, guys, that's one of the devil's workshop. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that battle depression, that's, um, you know, um, is the feelings of inferiority, inferiority, feelings of low self-esteem, feelings of not being enough, you know, feelings of not being loved. And sometimes they are placed in environments that are conducive for them to be able to feel that way, whether it's telling in a marriage, in a relationship or family members, you know, sometimes it's even mother and father that mistreat their children and, and, and call them different names and make them feel like they are not um, enough for them. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they always, um, you know, you ever heard parents tell their children, you good for nothing, you black, ugly thing, <sighs> you'll never amount to anything. Wow. So that, that preys on your mind, you know, and the mind, like I said, is a battleground that we have to fight every day. But thank the Lord Jesus. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who mm -hmm. came and gave us the power and the authority to be able to fight these um, battles. Amen. Mindset is a set of belief that shape how you make sense of the world and yourself. It influences how you think, feel, behave in any given situation, a set of assumptions, methods, or notions held by one or more group of people. So when you have a mindset, it means that you are, um, you know, you, you, like they say, I have a made up mind. I have a made up mind. That's what a mindset, when people have a made up mind. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two kinds. I, I, I was, I did a little bit of research, fixed mindset and, and the grow, growth. Fixed mindset is when you believe your abilities are fixed traits and therefore can't be changed. You may also believe that your talent and intelligence alone leads to success and that no effort is required. So, which is erroneous. And then we have the growth. When you um, grow um, as in mature, when you have a mature mindset, you believe that your talents and your abilities can be developed over time through effort and persistence. Yes. When you have a mature or grown mindset, you don't believe necessarily that everyone can become Einstein, Einstein or Mozart. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just because they tried. However, believe that we all can improve and get smarter. And that is the truth. Mm -hmm. And so with a grown and mature person, you know that. You know, um, they, it's sad to say that some people are, um, you know, they, they, they feel like they're so above everybody else. They feel like they, mm -hmm. and that is arrogancy and pride. They mm -hmm. feel like they have, like nobody can surpass their intelligence, that they are so smart, that, that mm -hmm. some people even dare think that because of their position in the church, that mm -hmm. God loves them more than mm -hmm. a regular member. Mm -hmm. And I have said this so many mm -hmm. times in my, my different podcasts, God shed the same amount of blood for yeah. the whole wild world. Yeah. So that means that he doesn't love the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, which is the ones from the, um, the bishop from the fivefold ministry. He doesn't love them any more than he loves you, but to whom 
much is given, and I have said this before also, much will be required. So when you have a mindset is um, people um, has come to a place where they know that um, they know that, okay, I have come to the end of my, of my rope. I'm going to give an example um, with the prodigal son. And I know a lot of people know this story. The prodigal son came to a mindset. He said, I don't want to stay here no more. Give me all the money that I didn't work for. I want it now. <laughs> you know, it's my money, like that commercial say, and I want yeah. it now. <laughs> and he made sure that he went to get this money. And yeah. his father, who was so loving, even though he knew that he didn't deserve it, he gave it to him. All right. So he took his mind and in his mind, like I said, immature mind in his immature mindset, he mm -hmm. thought that the money that he had was going to be enough for him to live a lavish life and enjoy life and drink and women and cars and houses and whatnot. Well, as the story goes on, he finds out that his, what he thought was not cut out as what he was expecting. And sometimes, you know, this is what I say about um, that scripture that we read. Let this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus, be also in you. You got to allow God to transform your mind and your way of thinking. Yeah. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. And when you come to Jesus Christ, when you give your heart to him and you ask him to be um, your Lord and your savior, you ask him to come in and to dwell within you. One of the first things is your mind has to be changed by mm -hmm. the renewing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, by the washing of the word. You have to apply that word because you can't think like the world. Like say, for instance, if you were somebody who um, used to sleep around a lot, right? From, say, Tom and then Dick and then Harry and then, you know, Paul and Peter and Simon. And when yeah. you come to it's Christ, those <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, not being funny, but some of them are Christian men in the church <laughs> that are lowering these sisters into believing yeah. that, you know, I have to test drive you. You like a oh, car, gosh. like, you know, and, and it's so sad that even though, and I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about just regular guys and regular members. I'm talking about those in position mm -hmm. of leadership that preach and teach the word of God and ha, huh, and you know, and here he comes and there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are the ones that are telling, I mean, you have to be, we, how do I know we are compatible? How do we, that I know that we are going to be good together. I need to find out. I can't go into a relationship with you. And then afterwards, I, you know, I'm not going to like it. That's why you have the dating period. So when you have a mindset, you date, you, you, and you expose all these things how you like it, when you want it, how you want it, et cetera. So all these things are, you know, you got to have a mindset. And I'm just saying for my sisters out there, you understand? I, 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 I'm going to say this. I don't know why the Holy Spirit brought this to my mind, but I'm going to say this. Any pastor, apostle, prophet, deaconess, usher, you know, the orphan, um, the, 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 the one that who cleans that anybody who has any type of position and is telling you that you should lower your standards, you should, um, you know, lower your morals and, um, um everybody is doing it. It's not true. When I got mm -hmm. married, I was a virgin and my mm -hmm. husband was my first and he mm -hmm. still is my first because I haven't had anyone after him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying. You know, this is not a, something that 
the world. We have adapted the world's mentality. And that's yeah. why a lot of people are, are living an erroneous life. They, they mm. are living a double life in the church. And the Bible says, you know, I wish you were hot or you were cold. Because yeah. if you are lukewarm, mm. I will spew you out of my mouth. And they think that because they're still... Um, you know, preaching and teaching the word of God, and they still feel the presence of God, they think that they're still in right standing with God. I mm. wrote something on Facebook, and, and I'm going to say it right now. I think I wrote it either today or yesterday. And it says that if you want to know if, I, um, if you are in right standing with God, you have to mirror your life with the word of God. That's so right. if the word of God doesn't condemn it, then you are in a right standing with God. But mm -hmm. if the word of God condemns it, then you are not in right standing with God. Mm -hmm. Period. Amen. Period. Period. This, if the word of God say you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't lust after this. You shouldn't lust after that. You shouldn't lust after what your brother has, what your sister has. If, if the Bible says that you're supposed to walk in unity, why are you trying to cause division in the church? Mm -hmm. If the Bible says that, you know, lying or, or, or overeating is a sin, guess what? That's in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we all have to yeah. find ourselves there. And that's how we are going to know for sure mm -hmm. that we are in right standing with God. So your mind has to be made up for God. I live for God. I will die. So I'm going to do things God's way. And I also wrote that when you do God things, God's way, guess what? The blessings will follow. That's A right. lot of people want to get rich, but with get, get rich schemes, you know, mm. they want to, um, it, it's, it's so sad that, and I, and I had been, uh, um, a prey to, to one of these, not that I was that stupid, but I, I, I was, um, you know, reached out by some guys who claimed they wanted to be in a relationship with me and not even a week of talking to them. And they were like waking my behind up at five o'clock in the morning. And I was like, what, you know, <laughs> anyway, which I, sh I should have stopped them right there. But yeah. They, they started with, you know, good morning, beautiful. How are you? Blah, 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 blah. And all this other stuff. And to, to find out that they wanted money. They first, they, they, they were like, uh, uh, buy me a Walmart car. Then it was like, um, uh, there's an orphanage that I belong to and it's in Africa and the poor children. So I said to them, oh, great. I said, I will pray for you that your ministry is successful because mm -hmm. my church mm -hmm. also has a ministry for Africa. So mm -hmm. brother, we are doing what the Lord says. And they don't like that because what they want is they want your money. So I don't care what position he has. So if he claim he's a pastor and you know that he's well known or whatever if they're trying to get money from you guess what your mind has to be in a place where you know that that is not the will of god and Amen. tell them i will pray for you because you do need prayer that is not scriptural so mm -hmm. if it's not in the bible why are you doing it you understand i feel like any pastor, prophet, apostle, or whoever does something like that to con people into giving their money. What's mm -hmm. going on is that they um, they don't really believe that God is the supplier of their needs. And we sing, you know, you are Jaira, you are enough. And we sing, you know, enlarge my territory, God. But do you really believe it? Do you really believe that God can supply all your needs? And mm -hmm. part of this also, and I will be content in every circumstance, are you really, or are you really to try to prove to people that you have so much money that you, that you live in these lavish places or whatever, that means to me that your mindset hasn't been renewed. So mm -hmm. the scripture says in Philippians, you have to let this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus, be also in you. So examples of a fixed mindset, either I'm going to do it or not. That's just who I am. I can't change it. If you have to work hard for it, then you don't have the ability. Um, for you, if you have to, um, if you don't try, then I won't, um, I, if you don't try, then I, if I don't try, then I won't fail. If I don't try, then I won't fail. Wrong. 
These are all erroneous fixed mm -hmm. mindsets. Okay, that job, career, house, relationship is totally out of my league. And the Bible said, you know, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications to make mm -hmm. your requests be made known unto God. Mm -hmm. So I always say, and, and like I said, um, you can shoot me if you want to. I can handle it. Because this year, let me say, 2022. I'm coming bold in the authority that the Lord okay. Jesus Christ has given me. So if no. you don't like it, you can get <laughs> off the page. And I'm not saying anything that, you know what? I'm here to empower you. I'm here to equip you. I'm here to edify you. I'm here to help you and myself make it into heaven. I'm not going to pacify nobody. I'm not going to, um, you know, pat you on the back. Yes. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but that mm. grace and mercy, a lot of people hold on to grace and mercy. Oh, and God loves me and he, his grace and his mercy and whatever is not a license to sin. Let me say that again. His yeah. grace and his mercy are not a license for you to go and sin. That's yes, me. you're going to find yourself in vulnerable situations because mm. of X, Y, Z, you know, you had a relationship and you broke up and your wife left you, your dog died, your, your cat, you know, went crazy, you know, all different things. Or you lost a child, which are very, very hurtful things. And sometimes in that vulnerable state, a lot of people tend to do things that they know that are wrong, but just to feel a sense of fulfillment, they do it. But it still doesn't give you a right. You're supposed to ask God for forgiveness. And then you're supposed to get up and say, God, give me the strength so I won't do this no more. There's a song that says, things I used to do, I don't mm -hmm. do them no more. Places mm -hmm. I used to go, I don't go there no more. So any man that's coming to tell you, leave your wife, leave your husband. Oh, um, I remember somebody had said to me when I was going through my divorce and I was really, really burnable. And he said to me, I will, I would date you and I will take care of you, but I'm not taking care of your children. And I was like, no, no. the judge, the judge gave me full custody of my children. And if you can't mm -hmm. take my children, that mm. means you, you can't take me. I'm sorry, That's but it, it, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. And you mm. know, there's people that say stuff like that, you know, and thank God, God, by, by God's grace, he gave me the strength, the knowledge, the mm. wisdom, but I had to keep my mind stayed on him. Mm. I had to keep my mind stayed on him. Otherwise I would have not made it. I had to keep myself focused. I had to keep myself in the word of God. <laughs> I had to align my, my life with the word of God. Amen. So, um, uh, when you know you have a grown growth or mature mindset is I can learn to do anything that I want. Mm -hmm. That's a, having a growth and mature mindset. I want to log, wait, <laughs> um, I can learn to do anything that I want. The second is I am constantly an evolving work in progress. Mm -hmm. And we all are an evolving work in progress. Amen. None of us have arrived there yet. You yes. know, some of us are a little bit up the mountain. Some are in the middle. Some are uh, still at the valley, at the oh, plain, God. at the bottom <laughs> of the mountain. And some people are, are almost at the top and none of us haven't arrived yet. Yes. And then the other one is the more you challenge yourself, the more informative you, be, you, you would become. The more you challenge yourself. You know, you read books, you watch programming that is um, edifying, that would inspire you, whether it's be for to, how to increase your finances, how to be better in a relationship, how to be a better mm -hmm. husband, a better father, mm -hmm. a better daughter, mother, etc. how to even cook. You know, they have everything now Ooh. on social media that you can do. Um, the other one is I only fail when I stop trying. Just remember that you will only fail when you stop trying and that job position, career relationship or, or looks, it looks challenges, but let me apply for it. So mm -hmm. that should be your mentality. You know, mm -hmm. I know, you know, do it scared. Like they say, cause a lot of times, you know, we, we like Peter, like Jesus bid me to come and, and, and we like, Daddy <laughs> like, you know, trying to walk on the water. So sometimes <laughs> you still gotta like, you know, the, 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 that position or something like that, you know, you start. One thing I have to say though, if it 
Um, because a lot of people ask for things and the Bible said they ask amiss. Meaning that if I'm married and somebody wants to be in, in um, relationship with me, they single, but I'm married. Mm -hmm. And you, you're praying for God to release me so I can marry you. Where's the, where's the Christ mindset there? Where is the mentality there of Christ? Where, the, where, how does this align itself with the word of God? And let me tell you, it has happened. I have seen it happen. I've seen friends of mine, like I said before, that he was a, a very powerful pastor. And then a, 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 a Susie, um, you know, home wrecker came to the church. And all of a sudden he fell in love with this woman and he started like, you know, going out with her, call himself counseling and uh, of course started laying off the hands and whatnot. And next thing he did, he, he left his wife and, um, you know, he got divorced, the, the church got divided. And that's a lot of things that people don't understand when you're in a position of leadership. What happens is like you cause so much habit, you cause so much problem, you know, your reputation is, is, is torn down. You know, people are going to leave your congregation, you know, um, people, uh, you, you, the families that are affected on both sides, you know, your family, their family, every time a divorce happens, it's not just one person or when somebody cheats, it's not just one person that gets affected. I don't mm -hmm. know why people don't get this through mm -hmm. their mind. They're mm -hmm. very selfish in mm -hmm. their mindset. You know, they always think that, oh, it's just going to be me. Let's meet at a hotel. Let's, let's, let's um, meet regularly at a hotel. Let's plan this and we're going to be together. But they don't know that one day God is going to lift that blanket up and expose them. And since, and, and greater is going to be the fall because giants do fall. You don't know how much you're going to affect your family, his family, and people that really looked up to mm -hmm. you as yeah. a leader, as a minister, you sure. know, so we have to walk circumspectly before God. That's why I love Psalms 19 and 14. I'm almost done, guys. Um, I love Psalms um, 19 and 14. And it says, you know, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Mm -hmm. Let it be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, mm -hmm. for you are my strength and my redeemer in a relationship the more you praise your partner's ability the more you'll make them want to grow you mm. know and the more um the more um they will feel better about themselves people mm. with a fixed um mindset um always trying to seek validation people who have a fixed mindset that I'm this way and nobody can change me. And this is what I want. And I don't care what nobody said. Nobody's going to change me. I'm believing God for this. And, and I know that God is going to give it to me. And you have to, I'm not saying that God won't give you what you ask for, but it has to be in yeah. his will. Yes. It has to be according to his word. Yes. Always trying to seek validation to prove they work not just to others, but to themselves. Yes. To themselves. You understand? Mm -hmm. Will I look smart or dumb? Will I will I um sweat um succeed or, or fail? Will I be accepted or will I be rejected? Will I feel like a winner or a loser? You know, those are the, the mentality that we have that people are always fighting with. We are all born with certain amount of intelligence and it isn't interchangeable. We are all capable of changing who we are. We can all learn new things and improve. Studying, working hard, and practicing new skills are all ways to de develop new talents and to develop new abilities. So um, when you have a fixed mentality on um, and the results, you miss out on all the things you can learn along the way. Always say to yourself, I haven't mastered it yet. Replace negative thoughts with positive ones. Making mistakes is one of the best ways to learn. So instead of shying away from challenges, embrace them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, um, I'm going to give the, the other scriptures that I have at the end. And... Um, um, yes, I have two scriptures, but I'm going to give them at the end. So my, my girls can, um, you know, <laughs> expand on this mindset. 
And my question to you, ladies, is mm -hmm. why should we have the mindset of Christ? Why should we um, embrace it? And why should we adhere to it? So who's going first? <laughs> I guess Julia, because the last time you went, I, I made oh. you win. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh. When I was studying, I was studying about Joshua because Joshua, when Moses died, I'm going to go to Joshua chapter one. Mm -hmm. Says, now after, starting at the first verse, says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Moses, the son of Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Yes. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to unto the great <coughs> river, the river Euphrates. The all babies, the land yeah. of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. And yes. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be mm. strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou drive shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Also be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all, to do according to all the law all which the law. Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn yes. from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For in thou shalt make thy way prosperous, mm. thou shalt have good success. Success, yes. He told Joshua that just as he was with Moses, he was going to be with him. With and him. he had to lead a people. So he yes. had to have a mindset. Lord, what do you want me to do? He had yes. to meditate on the law, which is the word of God. And that's what God wants us to do. If we don't meditate on the law, he told him, if you meditate on this law day and night, you shall have good success. But he told them to be of good courage and yes. be very courageous. Very, you know, so he had he already was telling him what to do with his mind, you know, <clears throat> and having a good mind is something the Lord wants us to have. Exactly. He says in 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 um in Philippians four and seven and eight, it's in in it says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ yes. Jesus. But finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think, think on, on these things. things. Amen. And it led me to what virtue is. Virtue is a behavior of high moral standards. Yes. You know, some people don't live with a high moral standard. No. Nope. That's why we don't have the mindset that we need to please God. Because our morals are all messed up. Because why? We lust after this and we lust after that and we chase and Mary Sue John's husband and Mary Sue John's this and that and the other, and we're not seeking the things of God. Amen. But he said, "Whatsoever things are lovely and pure and of good report, 
these are the things we're supposed to be thinking on. Yes. You know, and we're supposed to have a good mind. And one more scripture, Philippians 4 and 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again, I say rejoice. You know why? Because a happy heart will keep your mind in perfect yes. peace. Yes. But sometimes we're so busy boggled down about our problems, our problems, our problems. Let me tell you something. Sometimes it could be so much worse. But we're so busy complaining about the little that it is that we don't give God the glory for what it's not. Yes. You and know? comparing. And, and comparing. It's just thanking God for what it is. Yes. You know, I mean, some people, let's say they didn't get, I wanted a car for Christmas. Did I get a car? No. Will I ever get a car? Of course I will. One of yes. these days. But did I get a car? No. But <laughs> I, did I cry? No. My husband bought me something and I was like, oh my God, he was so sweet because I'm like, he bought me something that was so, I mean, I make my own homemade sufrito mm -hmm. and I was having so much trouble with my food processor. And he took me to the store. And he said, honey, which one of these do you want? Oh, wow. And this thing, he, it, it does the <laughs> blender, it does the food processor, and it makes smoothies. Mm, there so, you go. And we got it for, they wanted to sell us the thing for the, a high price. And I looked at the girl and I said, no, my husband said that thing costs this price. Can we get it for that price? And let me tell you something. We got it for the price my husband mm -hmm. quoted it for. One, he do it. I'm a bargain hunter. I'm a bargain hunter. Yes. And I, I'm, I was so grateful because he didn't have to do that. You know, because I wasn't expecting him to take me to the store and say, come here, honey. Because I thought we were going shopping for the kids. Yes. You know? But he was taking me and I was like, I didn't expect it, you know, but I thank God because, <laughs> you know, we complain about this so much, you know, oh, I didn't get this and I didn't get, but thank God, you know, my husband said, I just wanted you to have something under that tree. Wow. And I was like, wow. He's a keeper. <laughs> you know why? Because we always <laughs> buy each other a gift after Christmas. Yeah, we buy everybody because we have a big house. We have a big family, so yes. we buy everybody. We make sure they all have, and we, me and him, we always wait till after. But this year, he said, "Not mm -hmm. this time." He wanted me to have something under that tree. Wow! Like, oh my god! <laughs> so you know, I was just so happy because I mean, the little things that we don't even think about mm -hmm. that God is so good with. And if we would just think on these things, I could have been thinking about, oh, well, I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And I, honey, what I didn't get, I didn't need. Yes. That's why I wouldn't, wouldn't have used it anyway. Yes. And I, I'm so grateful because God knows how to do things. And if we mm. would just keep our mind, it is so important to keep your mind. Yes. On him. Because if we were to keep our mind on him, we wouldn't be the, all messed up like we are sometimes. Mm. Or depressed and down in the dumps about the holidays and yeah. things like that. Mm. Let me tell you something. My whole family got sick over the holiday. And we was mm. like, oh, my God, we have not been sick since this corona started. Mm -hmm. For all of us to come down sick at the same time, none of us ended up in the hospital. And let me Praise tell you, something. you, I'm a prayer warrior. I lay, I lay hands on the people in a heartbeat. I laid hands on my granddaughter. She was burning up with 103 fever. Man, mm. I prayed for her. I said, Lord, I bind this fever right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. She medicine one time, mm. one time. And the next day she was back to normal. Mm. I said, that's the God that I serve. I said, Amen. I expect things to happen instantly. Mm. I don't expect to be going a whole week trying mm. to help my baby that baby's six years seven years old I yes. know how to help her you know it's hard when you have babies that are sick like that mm -hmm. and I'm not you I don't have no babies no more my baby's 21 years old <laughs> so Thank I haven't Jesus. been down that road in a long time <laughs> so you know it, to see her sick and with a fever like that it kind of scared me a little bit because I remember when my kids used to get fevers like that that my babies used to go into convulsions and that's not fun wow. 
So, you know, and I'm like, Lord, I don't want to have that experience, you know? And a couple of my grandkids go into convulsions like that. And I'm like, mm. I don't need that happening to me. So, you know, when God took that fever away, I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, and I got sick, but thank God I didn't get, I didn't end up in a hospital. I didn't end up, I have an inhaler. I didn't have to take my inhaler. I am so grateful because it could have been worse. Yes. You know, and God is so good. If we just keep our mind stayed on him, stayed on him. Yes. We have to have a mindset that is kingdom minded. Exactly. I always tell people that we got to be kingdom minded. We can't yes. be all about ourselves. Everybody is all about this selfie thing. And I'm like, I don't know about selfies. Mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. selfies very good. My husband is always trying to do me a self with, you know, do selfies. <laughs> with me. I'm like, babe, I, he's always trying to catch me. And I'm like, all right. But let me tell you something. My thing is being kingdom minded. And when we are kingdom minded, he's mindful of us. Yes. You know, and I thank God for that. It's important to be kingdom minded. And those yes. are my scriptures. But one of my scriptures also, which I, maybe I'll give it at the end. I don't know. But one of my okay. scriptures led me to Ephesians 6 about the armor of God. When you mm. put on the helmet of salvation. Yes. It's, it's, it's okay if you have the armor. But if you don't put it on, what use is it to you? You have Amen. to put on the helmet of salvation. Yes. It's going to protect your mind against the attacks of the, the enemy against yes. your mind. Yes. Because idle mind is the devil's workshop. Isn't that the truth? And he will tell you things that's not true, that goes against the word of God. And you got to know what the word of God is. And yes. if you're not reading the word, you lost. So, yes. And you've got to have on the helmet of salvation. That's why I'm I just want to interject because something, something came to me when you were speaking about, about that, about having the helmet of salvation. I know for sure that whenever the enemy um, comes to you and try to make you sin, you're going to always have a lot of people that are going to be with you. And they're going to be like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But when mm. you fall... When you're exposed, <laughs> they're nowhere to be found. You know, they are nowhere to be found. Oh. And it's sad that you can have people in the church and be like, oh, I did it. So, you you know, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I smoke marijuana, so it's nothing. I did drugs, a little bit of drugs. I double, you know, just try it. But then they didn't get hooked, but you will get hooked. You, you get understand? They yeah. slept around. They didn't get pregnant, but you will get pregnant. Oh, wow. And uh, like I said, but when, when you fall and when you're exposed, everybody turns against you the same ones that was there trying to help you and telling you oh don't worry about it you know do you you know it's your life but yeah you're gonna recognize also when the enemy is speaking and when it's god you know mm -hmm. and this is what i'm saying let this mind which was also in christ jesus be also mm -hmm. in you yeah. if you let the mind of christ which is the word of god and you let your mind be washed with the word of God, then you won't have to endure hardship as a, uh, you know, um, uh, on, um, as an unbeliever, as an unbeliever. Yes. Right. I mean, you, you will endure hardness as a good soldier, but not as a non-believer. Yes. Amen. So now my beautiful cousin, Tony will be speaking on mindset. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to go back to your question which was why you said why is it um important to have the, mind, the mindset the mindsets of christ right yeah um <clears throat> so i mean you know i'm listening to the two of you and there's so much like running through my brain because as you're saying certain things i'm remembering just my my walk with god and just the roller coaster ride that it has been and yes you know, it, and i've said this more than a couple of times on this broadcast that, you know, I feel like I am the, the prodigal daughter and I've, I've had my, my ebbs and my flows, right? When it comes to, um, you know, just living righteously and making like righteous choices against all odds, against the temptations or whatever have you. And, um, I think, so 
for for the I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna say like this, like the simple answer, <laughs> you know, to that question because scholastically, logically, I feel like is a simple answer, you know, to that question. Why is it important to have the mind of Christ? If you study Christ out for even 15 minutes, you understand that he was absolutely perfect. He was 100% human, 100% divine. Yes. And there was nothing that he said, thought, or did that was not righteous and holy and, and sanctified and, you know, of God, right? So to think like him um, is not necessarily to be perfect because we know as human beings, we cannot be perfect. Um, I, sometimes I like to just say like excellent, we could be excellent, you know, as excellent as we could hope to be, you know, as, as humans. But I'm thinking like the simple answer is the world would just be a better place if we yes. all just thought like Christ, right? Yes. I have a friend, I have a very close friend who honestly is becoming less of a close friend. And I'm going to say that because th this person has been in my life for over three decades, right? And I'm telling my age, right? But, <laughs> but this person has shown me over the years that their mindset about things can be so toxic and so poisonous to me as someone who is their friend and kind of like being in their company and, and having to kind of absorb that type of mindset, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you know how the Bible says we have to guard our hearts because it's the wellspring of life, right? Yeah. And when you're dealing with somebody who is just, their mindset is, is basically kind of cynical and negative, it, it will affect you. It'll affect you in like, and then pretty much in like in a negative way. And it can, if you, you know, we know we, we, we pray and we stay prayed up and we read and we study and that's like our defense, right? Cause we talked about the full armor guys. So we got to have the helmet on and that does kind of help prevent certain things from penetrating. But I just know like the type of person that I am, I can be very empathetic sometimes, or I could be very gracious and very understanding. And I just will kind of like allow certain things to to go on or certain things to happen that probably really shouldn't happen in terms of like speech and, and, and engagement. So this friend came to mind when, we were when you guys were talking because they posted something on their social media. And <laughs> just thinking about this, I'm like, oh my gosh. They posted something on their social media and it says, it said, I don't give a bleepity bleep, <laughs> right? Who I hurt anymore take it personal if you want to something like that the person yeah. said and I was just like so I kind of like wrote back and I was like what is that <laughs> you know what is that all about you know I kind of just put like a like a emoji up and you know a person wrote back to me and they were like well this doesn't have anything to do with you or us or our friendship and I'm thinking to myself how can it not if that's your mindset that yes. you don't care who you hurt anymore how am I just all of a sudden exempt from that? Like you, you're basically saying like, whenever you're ready to not care that you hurt me, you're gonna switch that mindset on, and Come I'm on. Just gonna, I'm gonna be a victim uh, to yes. to that philosophy, you know? So he was like, "Oh, it has anything to do." I said, and then I I I will confess, I got very sarcastic, and I said, "Well, you know what? That's a great. I think I said something like that's a great." Um, mindset i think i even said mindset i don't know if i said mindset or great philosophy or something like that i said we all should follow that the world would be such a better place right? yes I was like, yes so sarcastic because i'm like because i wanted him to see like if we all thought like that you know, yes like, imagine what could you imagine I can only imagine i'm saying i don't give a flippity flip flam you know who i hurt and just take it personal i don't care you know it's like can you imagine and it's just like and the thing is, again, so the empathetic me is like, I know, because I know this friend, because I've known him for a very long time, I know that they were speaking most likely out of a lot of hurt and a lot of frustration. That's they it. probably felt like they held back from hurting someone who did not hold back from hurting them. So now yes. they just feel 
their mindset is a retaliation mindset, you know? And, you know, so this is, I'm going to talk about this whole mindset thing from the flip side, right? Because again, like, I, I feel like as I, I am a Christian woman, right? Like, but I feel like, I, I, I feel like I spend a lot of time in the world. And by that, I simply mean, like, I have a lot of friends that are not Christians. Um, I sometimes don't even operate as like a sanctified Christian. I get into my stuff, <laughs> you know, like my, you know, whatever. Right. So it's just like, I, I, I but because I, because that's the case, I feel like I see, I see it from the other side sometimes more clearly, you know, yes. and it's just like, like you guys, you guys are both parents, right? I'm not a parent yet, right? So you think about it like, well, I've been where my children are. Like I've been 15, I've been 21, mm -hmm. I've been eight, you know? So you could speak to stuff as an adult because you know what it was like when you were younger. You, you know, you kind of like, I remember when I was 15, I remember I used to try to sneak around and I remember I used to try to lie to my parents. And I remember, you know, so you could be, you know, so when they say stuff, you're like, mm -hmm, I, uh, yeah, I, I used to, I know. So you're not fooling me, you know? <laughs> so it's yes. kind of like, because I'm seeing things, I see things on both sides sometimes, right? So, so this mindset thing, um, you know, it's still a piggyback off of the question, like, why is it, you know, so important for us to have the, the mind of Christ? Because I feel like almost any other mindset that's, that, that's a little bit, that's a little bit too far removed from that is probably the most detrimental, toxic thing that yes. you could participate yes. in. Yes. You know, we should care whether or not we hurt people. We should that's care right. whether or not. We should, we should care whether or not we're being hurt. You know, we should have self-love and self-care. But if, that, if, if we don't have that for ourselves, it's going to be very difficult for us to have that concern for other people. But having, like Ashley was talking about in the beginning of the, of, the, of the podcast, about having that fixed mindset. And when I think about that friend of mine, they had that fixed mindset. I have had countless conversations with this friend. And this same friend, I remember another incident happened with, with this same friend they were up for a, 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 a promotion at, at their job. And they were like, yeah, I'm excited. You know, I, I, I'm possibly going to be doing this. I'm possibly going to be moving. It's going to be great. It's going to be this, that, and the third. And come to find out the person didn't get a promotion. And so we're talking about, I'm like, what happened? <clears throat> come to find out all of the people that needed to, uh, what's the word? Like, what's the word? Reference? Like, would somebody yes. have a reference, have to recommend you or whatever? Yeah. All of the people that had a say in this, whether this person was going to get this position were completely opposed, not because my friend was not capable. It was because of my friend's attitude. <laughs> like, uh, my friend's attitude was sucky. <laughs> and they were just like, we don't think that they would excel in this position because their attitude, which is yes. mindset, it's your mindset. Your attitude was just not on the level that they wanted to deal with. Like, yes. this is somebody who is kind of, like, antagonistic. This is somebody who's just kind of, like, rude. This is somebody who, and I don't know how we've been, I mean, I feel like we've been friends for so long because we've been friends since we were children. But it's just, like, I felt like if I met you as an adult, we would definitely not be friends. But because I've known you for so long, it's like, I just, I'm just so, like, used to you. But I've just had so many conversations. And one time it was just like, well, you know, I would try to say things like, well, you know, like, it's maybe you should think about thinking about things in a different way. Maybe it, it was this attitude or it was this mindset that kind of got you in the situation. Maybe you need to try to shift so that you could, you know, yes, in one ear, out the other. What are the, it's just like, oh my God, like the stubbornness. And, you know, a, Christ's mindset was a humble mindset. Yes, that say that was like a, uh, submissive yeah yes 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 the submissive humble mindset not so much that you are a pushover and i think that people get that confused too they they mm -hmm. feel like um well if i'm if i'm accommodating or if i'm if i am humble or if i am approachable or it, you know that then, then i'm i'm a sucker you know or i'm a pushover or whatever and that's not the case like no. i think you know Another struggle too, like this is kind of like an aside, but not really. This 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 weird dichotomy, like with people, like when you think about like the relationships between men and women, 
and that when that word submission comes up, right? And the women, they just cringe and, you know, because <laughs> it's like, who are you telling me? I don't have to be submissive to nobody, you know, my daddy, you know, and they get like all <laughs> defensive and it's just kind of like, you just start, and it's like, but that's not what submission, the submission is not, you're in the relationship with this person and they're just bossing you around and just telling you what to do. And you just have to say, yes, master, yes, master. You know, it reminds me of that uh, scene in Coming to America where the first one, yes. where the girl yes. comes in. Walk like a dog. Walls, and she, Up on one foot. Exactly. <laughs> and she, he's asking her, he wants somebody who has her own brain, like, who has her own thoughts, who has her own opinion. Yes. He's like, yes. do you have a favorite book? And she's like, yes, I do. And he's like, what is it? He's like, whatever you what like. You <laughs> and he's just like, oh my gosh, like shoot me down, you know? And it's so, yes, you can have your own mind. You can have your own opinion. You can have your own thoughts and your feelings. And it doesn't mean that if you compromise or if you yield or if you step back, that you're just some type of a punk or some type of a sucker. People are so worried about that. Like that's, that's also very toxic, poisonous, like mindset that really blocks your blessings. It really, really does. Yes. Because people just, people don't want to deal with you when you're just that antagonistic and that problematic. And a, another friend of mine, she posted, this was so cute. She posted this picture of, of a, uh, like a tiger or something. It was like a tiger. It was some type of wild animal. It was, you know, it was like a big cat. It was like a tiger or a leopard or something like that. And it had, it had something on its head. Like it, it, I guess it put his head in something and it got stuck and it, and it, it was just sitting in the middle of the road. And this was like in Africa, you was, it was like a dusty road. It was a lot, you could just black Africans around and, you know, and, and so you, and then of course you just have this <laughs> wild animal in the middle of the road. Um, and all the people are standing around and they're not making any attempt to help uh, take the this animal. thing off this animal's head. And in the caption, it says, sometimes people want to help you, but it's your nature that convinces them not to. Wow. I was like, oh, come on. I was like, that's, okay. <laughs> that's a mouthful. Yes. Well, come like, on. Oh, mm-hmm. it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, I want to help you, but you know, you kind of nasty. And it's like they don't want to go there and try to pull this thing off the 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 uh the this big cat. And then the cat just now all of a sudden is 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 scared or angry and lunges out and bites your head off. Exactly. Just trying to help. (laughs) Very nice. Very nice. People will be like this to you when your mindset is, you know, like this. (laughs) Your mindset is adverse. People don't want to be like, they don't want to be around you. They don't want to hurt you because they, people are going to instinctively protect themselves against, you know, something that they know is harmful, something that they know is toxic, something that they know is poisonous. They're going to instinctively protect themselves, you know, from that. So, I mean, that's kind of like what I wanted to share about like mindset, like from the other side, it's like, yeah, we, you know, we want, we want to have a Christ-like mindset. But this is what it looks like when we don't, you know, have one. And it's important to understand that it's not just about like, because some people find it very difficult to follow Christ because they they feel, well, yeah, he was perfect and I'm not perfect. Okay, great. We get that, right? And and we, we're not striving for perfection like right here on earth, like right now, because we have a home that we're going to go to. We have a whole nother life and existence that we're going to live. And that existence is perfect. You know, and we will be be made perfect in that environment. So it's it's not for you to try to like necessarily be perfect now, but even the Bible says like you know make keep peace as much as it depends on you. Like just keep the peace. You know, mm-hmm. so if you just yes. have the mindset of Christ, then you know people are gonna kind of want to be around you. They're gonna want to support you. They're gonna like want to help you. You know, and you know I think about little things that in my life that it just kind of like it touches me because like for this past Christmas holiday for example <laughs> and this is not to brag because this is really not even like a big deal but you know just thinking about it it just kind of is like kind of cute so I, I leave my classroom and I come back and I have like three or four uh Christmas cards in my mailbox outside my classroom door and I'm like oh I got Christmas cards you know so it's like different teachers are like sending me like Christmas cards and stuff and I just happened to another teacher was walking by and I was just like I was like oh my gosh I got like three or four Christmas cards this is so sweet and then she was like I ain't get no Christmas card (laughs) (laughs) well (laughs) 
<laughs> there was nothing wrong. Like I just, I there was nothing wrong with this teacher. It wasn't like she was like an anti person or anything like that. But I just thought it was so funny. Like it's amazing. Like sometimes I don't even think about how much of an impact that I've had on certain people's lives until they think of me. And yes. then it's just like, oh, they thought of me. Like they didn't necessarily think of you and give you a car, but that doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. But whatever type of relationship I had with that person, it was endearing enough to them for them to think of me and give me a card. You know, everyone take the picture with their family oh. and kids, and everyone's wearing the same pajamas. And you know, and then they said you sent me that. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. You know, and so it's just it's like again, it was just it's something so simple. It's not me to say, like, oh, you know, I'm just like this amazing person. That everybody wants to just give me things. But it was just like so cute when it was just like, I didn't get no car. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, like I felt kind of bad. But, you know, it's, I, I, I do realize like sometimes, like I don't, I'm not nice to people and, and, and kind and endearing to people because I want you to do stuff for me. I'm, that's just how I am. And that's your nature. Right. It's just, it's just my nature. And so, you know, but like I said, sometimes I don't realize like how much like my my way, my attitude, my mindset, the way I am with people, like how it does leave that type of like imprint on them where, you know, if I was that big cat in the middle of the road with that thing stuck on my head, like people would be more willing to help me, I guess, because maybe I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't like lash out or something like that. I would be more grateful. I would be more, yeah. whatever. So Again, so the, yeah, so that was just like my point, like, you know, simply the flip side of not having a Christ-like mindset can just, it can be hurtful to other people, but it can be very, very hurtful to you. So that was kind of like the point that I wanted, that I wanted to make, so. Yeah, and, um, you know, just thinking about uh, that story, it's just, like I said, uh, even the, the, the analogy was like, great, you know, mm. Bishop Bonnie Brown uh, from the first um, church triumphant church of jesus christ is the pastor there mm -hmm. and he's our pastor mm -hmm. he said and also cousin. a story about <laughs> and cousin he, he said a story about um a snake a snake that a man um, found on the wayside and the snake was like hurt and the man took the snake home and nourished the snake back to health and one day he was coming back from work i guess tired or whatever he remembered the snake and he went into um, feed the snake. When he fed the snake, the snake bit him. Right. So the man said to the snake, why you bit me? He said, well, you knew I was a snake before exactly. you came in. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Like, uh, you gotta, be... <laughs> yes, our mindset has to be set on, on, on things about when you depressed, you know, you can't go around people who are going to be, nobody knows the songs <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows my struggle you can't be around people like that you know you want to like the scripture say encourage yourself in the lord and, and you want to be able to shake that thing off you know shake yourself loose so you don't want to be um put placed in the same position with people who are downers you know you want people who are uh, uplifting yes, you, yes, you know, yes, who will yes, say, you yes, know what, yes, yes, sister, yes. you can do it. Get out of that place. You know, mm -hmm. you don't belong there, you know? Mm -hmm. So your mindset starts changing. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's mm -hmm. the same thing with people who are jelly. You know, you don't want to be around people who are jealous of you. You know, they're going to mm -hmm. end up like, um, mm -hmm. David killing you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> for what, for the things yeah. that you have. And which are material things. So all of mm -hmm. that stuff, like you have to surround, that's what the Bible says, surround yourself with like-minded people, like-minded mm -hmm. people, people of the same mentality. Mind you know, that. people <laughs> that want, that are striving yeah. to do the, everything right, that are striving to live this life, mm -hmm. you know, before God. Like I said, all of us, you know, even growing up, we did stuff that were not right. We did, we put ourselves in situation that we know that it was the mercy and the grace of God mm -hmm. that we made it out, <laughs> you know, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you have to know that, you know what, you got to get yourself up, you know, pick yourself up. And, 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 and make up your mind, just like the prodigal son, like the, you know, when I started with the story, you know, he right. came to his, his senses, right. he came to his yeah. mind yeah. and he said, you know what, when he found himself in the pig pen, eating, um, what the pigs were eating it's and wild. feeding the pigs, <laughs> you know, to be able to get a meal or a little bit of money because he squandered mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. What happened? He did, um, mm -hmm. came to his senses and he mm -hmm. said, you know what? 
I would rather go and be a servant in my father's house than stay yeah. here and eat this dung with all these pigs. Like even the, he started, yeah. it came back to his mem memory, mm -hmm. you know, even the servants in my father's house mm -hmm. eat mm -hmm. luxuriously mm -hmm. compared yeah. to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will arise. He mm -hmm. said, and I will. He said, first ask God for forgiveness. Mm. And he said, and then I'm going to go and ask my father for forgiveness. And mm. he said, and I will tell my father, I would accept you keeping me as one of your servants. But the love of the father, which is the love of God represented in this story, is that no matter where, how far we went, no matter the things that we did or said, you know, God is still merciful and he's still loving. And we should never think, or you should never allow people to make you think mm -hmm. that this is the end for you. You know, I feel sorry for the people who hang themselves, who jump from the bridge mm -hmm. or, you know, um, yeah. who shoot somebody because the mm -hmm. wife cheated on, on them and they went and shot the mm -hmm. wives up and mm -hmm. shot the children and then shot themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel really bad for those because they saw that as the only way out. They felt like their life was... Um, coming to an end there was no light at the end of the tunnel and that's why we're supposed to pray that the eyes and the of the understanding of mm -hmm. the people that's what the scripture says be enlightened because some people believe it or not they have the bible said gross darkness mm -hmm. in their heart and in their minds meaning mm -hmm. that there's no absence there's there's total absence of the truth of God, the truth that is in God. And it's predicated on fear. It's predicated on doubt. It's predicated on selfishness, on pride, on envy, on, on jealousy, you know, all these other things that you allow your mind to go through. And like you said, Tony, some people, you know, because they've been hurt, they feel like now they want to spew their venom on everybody they see, you know, and, and they want to be nasty to everybody. You understand? And it's like, you know, um, you have to change your mentality. So this new year, we starting this series and it's called new year, new you. Let us change our mind. Let our minds be washed with the word of God. Let us do things God's way. You understand? Um, I always say, um, you know, ask God for it. And if he doesn't answer, like I said, two things, he wants you to wait. Mm. To, um, the other thing is like, it's not what he wants for you. Mm. And we have to stop this mentality that we think that what we want is it's what's what best for us. <laughs> when we don't even know yeah. ourselves the mm. way that we need to know it. God yeah. knows us inside out. He knows our heart. He knows our likes. He, he created us. So mm -hmm. we have to get that mindset that God, if you're praying for a husband or a wife, God, um, I would like your word says, you know, um, to ask you for a suitable help. I would like to have a companion because your word said, you know, um, it's not good for men or women to be alone. And Lord, I would like that companion, but because you know me better than I know myself, please provide that person that I need that is perfect for me. Not perfect for everybody, perfect for me. And when you do, mm -hmm. when God send you the person, you have to accept what God gave you, you know, because a lot of people have a list and, uh, uh, you know, of how they want their wife. You know, I want her, you know, with a bull Derek body, you know, ties 10 and, you know, um, 36, 24, 36. And mm -hmm. I want her you know, with X, Y, Z amount of money and I want her to be successful and I want her to be famous and I want her to be, and we make, uh, which, which is nothing wrong if that's what your heart's desire, but it don't necessarily have to be that way. Because sometimes God will give you somebody who's going to be loyal, who's going to love you, who's going to stay with you, who's going to help you build a home, who's going to help you build a ministry, who's going to help you stay safe, Amen. if anything. That's if what? nothing else, just stay saved to keep you on the straight and the narrow. God yeah. will put you with a prayer warrior, with an intercessor, and That's he will what? show her your weakness. So mm -hmm. when you start like to try to stray away, that woman will be on her knees praying for you. God, deliver him. God, help him. Don't yeah. let him go through that, 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 um, the, the, you said the, 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 what you call it? The wide, the wide, um pathway uh, let him yeah. go through the narrow pathway god and not take him in the path of your righteousness for your name's sake 
And, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, that's when you know that everything that you have um, um, conditioned in your mind, this is what I want. Sometimes you're, you you got to cast down, the Bible says, every imagination and everything that highly exalted itself against the knowledge of God. What's mm. the knowledge of God? His word. Mm. And we have to submit our will to him. Our mindset should be, God, what is it that you want me to do? How mm. is it that you want me to proceed? Who is mm. it that you want me to marry? Where mm. is it that you want me to live? Where, you know, God, I'm applying for this job. Is it your will? God, mm. I'm doing this. Is it your will? I, 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 are you in agreement with me in this? If we tend to do that, if our mind will be set and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the Bible said all these things shall be added unto us. But anytime our mindset said, you know what? I got to lower my standard. You know what? Everybody in the world. Yeah, the world has a standard, but so does the church. That's so right. that's the word of God. And the mm -hmm. word of God is the stand. Nobody had to even tell you. You don't have to hear it preach all the time. You don't have to hear it teach. If you study the word of God, you're going to see that God has a standard. It's a navigation system. Right. And, and your mind has to adapt to it. You understand? Like I said, um, to, uh, I said before to someone, some guys were, were um, you know, were strictly street you know, and, and they, they used to call girls B and, you know, all this other stuff. And they learn all this behavior while they were in the world. But when you come to the church, you have to learn, you have to adapt yourself to the word of God. Now you can't be um, doing the same thing that you did. You can't be having Susie today and Mary tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, being double-minded and mm -hmm. unstable. You know, you mm -hmm. understand? So you got to accommodate your mind now to the word of God. I can't do that. I can't speak yeah. like that anymore. I can't mm -hmm. act that way. I got to mm -hmm. be more loving. I got to mm -hmm. be more caring. I got to be also teachable. You mm -hmm. understand? I got to be humble. Right. I got to mm -hmm. submit mm -hmm. myself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy that's Spirit thing is a big part. Yes, the teachable thing is big because that's, be that's teachable. what the issue is. Because a lot of people, are, yeah. yes. A lot of people don't want to be taught. You understand? They feel like they know, know it all. Like mm -hmm. I said, they either Einstein or, or Mozart, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, <laughs> they feel like, oh, I can, anything you can do, I can do better, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. a bad mentality to it's have in cycle. any type of administration, <laughs> whether it's in the church, whether it's outside, if you have that competitive spirit, you know, your mind has to, mindset has to change. It has to be, mm -hmm. be ye transformed by the renewing mm -hmm. of your mind. So every day we have to start renewing our mind. Have, you know, that we can have more faith in God. Well, the word of God said, and like I said, join yourself with like-minded people. All right. I don't even know what time it is, but. Um, <laughs> We've definitely passed our time, but I did just want to say the one thing, like, you know, in Proverbs, it does say, that is, you know, pride before destruction and haughtiness before the fall. Yes, and yes. so when you have that prideful mindset, when you're haughty and you're, you're too proud to be taught anything, you, you can never change your path, change your direction. You just, you're just trudging ahead like a stubborn bull, you know, just going forward. You're going at this brick wall at 100 miles per hour and everyone's trying to tell you there's a brick wall, you need to slow down. And you're yes. just like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need your help. I know what I'm doing. Then it's just like, okay, so now you don't hit this brick wall. Now what? <laughs> you know, yes. like we tried to tell you, you know, exactly. so it's, it, that's very true. Again, that flip side of that mindset, that's not like Christ. You are going to find yourself in some pickles, <laughs> you know, you're yes. in a pickle, you know, and it's like, you know, it reminds me of that. I don't know if you guys ever used to watch Woody Woodpecker when we were little. I yes, I did. Woody Woodpecker. And it was this one episode. I don't know what happened, but something happened. And there was like a guy, like a narrator in the background, like watching things that Woody Woodpecker was doing. And he kept saying, well, if Woody would have called the police, <laughs> this would have never have happened. <laughs> and it was just like, some Woody saw something and he didn't speak up. And he didn't say anything. And then something else happened. And then he still didn't say anything. And then something else, And it just escalated. It snowballed. And I just keep hearing that little boy's voice. If Woody would have called the police, and I'm just thinking, if you would have just heeded the word of warning, you know, yes. like, this that's, would have never have happened. It would you have know? never happened. And, and that's what it is. Like sometimes, you know, having the mindset of Christ is also having discernment and also knowing like when to slow down, when to speed up, when to stop, when to go. Yes. 
you know, and that's a, that's a blessing from God to get that. Like that's yes. revelation yes. from him. And when you, when you are humble enough, you know, he will give you that spiritual download and you'll be able to understand those things and see those things. So you won't get into these pickles, you know, but I mean, this mindset thing is very, very deep and it, it you know, you are only doing one week of it, but it, you know, it doesn't mean that people can't continue to study it like on their own, but even like practicing and living it, living it out because it's not, we're bombarded with so many things from every different direction. We live in this world and there's so many things going on in this world. I'm, you know, I, I met someone not too long ago. We got very close and he was confiding in me that he um, gets like, uh, he has a lot of anxiety, you know? And I'm just like, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't even know how people get anxiety. Like what, you know, because I'm just like, if something bothers me, I'm like, okay, God, that's you. Like, I'm just going to let you handle that because I don't, I don't have time for it. you deal with that. You know, so I don't just be sitting there with the jitters and the shake. And like, I was like, who, I don't have time for that. Like, and that's when I realized like, wow, people really don't know how to just lean on God and just like yes. have that peace with him. And it's like, yes. I feel sad, like. And so, you know, I said to my friend, like, listen, you know, you gotta, you gotta pray, you gotta meditate, you gotta like take some deep breaths, <laughs> you know, like, because the anxiety is not something that God wants for you. And that's your mind is just, you, he's, he's like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. I'm like, stop. Yes. Stop about what all that. Like, what, what, how is it helping you? Like, stop, yes. <laughs> you know? So yeah, you just, you have to, you have to guard your guard. The Bible says, guard your heart and your oh, mind. And yes. Right. Jesus, you have to guard them both. They're yeah. super duper precious, okay? If you get shot in your heart with an arrow, okay, or you get shot in your heart with a bullet, you're probably going to die. If you get shot with a bullet in your brain or arrow, you're probably most likely going to die. These are two very precious <laughs> like organs yes. that you have to protect biologically. So why yes. don't we protect them spiritually? It's the same concepts, you know? It's the same concept. Don't let that, that anxiety right there, I just see that as like a poison that's just like eating away at your brain. That's that's not a comfortable way to live. Like who Mm. who want that for yourself? So, you know, guard your heart, guard your mind. We're going to talk about heart next week. We're going to talk about a new heart next week, which is like great segue into like, we got to close this bad boy out. Yes. But I do want to, Julia, if you have any like last thing to say, I would definitely wanted to give you an opportunity. You said you might've had some scriptures that you wanted to see. Yes. I gave them, but I love that um, thing with the, um, you know, the fierce thing that nobody can approach because you have some leaders who are Mm -hmm. in that position Mm -hmm. You can't approach them Mm -hmm. because, you know, if they do something wrong and you would like to tell them, listen, you kind of hurt. You're off. You're off. And, you know, (laughs) plain and simple, you're off. And, you know, you would like them to apologize and they won't. No. And Mm. you can't even approach them. That's my friend. My friend is not saying sorry for nothing. (laughs) Because if you pull the, the 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 cone off of them, they may attack you. Yes, and you'll and be have. like you'll be more hurt than if you would have just left it alone. Yes, you know, and it it's so true, and it it's hurtful because you have people that you really care about in ministry who are in these positions. Yes, and who are these people? <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately mm-hmm. it's a yeah. terrible thing it's it is a, it's a terrible thing. thing yeah so before we go were you done julie i'm sorry i didn't want to yeah, interrupt. Done. okay so i was able to kind of look on uh line and um a cousin orville stopped by and he said hi yes so hi, cousin orville and we also have Camilla S. Marston. I hope I'm saying it right. Is it Marston? Yes. Marston. Yeah, that's one of my girlfriends. Yeah, she Hi, has Camilla. been commenting. And, you know, yes. so I just wanted to give a shout out to Camilla. Thank you so much for joining us on the live. You know, because some people do get to go back on the, the, on um, the replay. Page, yeah. But it's really wonderful when our friends can join us on the live. So we're happy to see you, Camilla. Come back and visit us again. Um, you know, definitely continue to leave your comments. This is for anyone. Leave your comments, leave your questions. Um, but Camilla just seemed to really be co-signing on a lot of 
what we were saying. I'm seeing a lot of yes, sis, and a lot of amen, Astrid, and go. <laughs> 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 so I was like, really, really good. So we're like, you know, happy that, um, you know, that, that she was able to join us tonight. So I just, I wanted um, to make sure that I made mention of that because we do want this to be a little bit more, slightly more interactive um, broadcast where we are um, acknowledging and appreciating um, our friends and family who jump on with us and share with us as we are elevating ourselves to advance the kingdom of God. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, okay. my girlfriend, um, Kelly Young Morero was on for a little bit. And also okay. my cousin, John T. Brown was on oh, for a little okay. bit. So we really, truly appreciate the, the support and the love. Um, I just have, like I said, I had um, two more scriptures and that's um, Philippians 4 and 7 and the peace of God which transcends all mm -hmm. understandings will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, the peace of God. <laughs> so we have to, like I said, let this mind, which is also in Christ Jesus be also in us. Mm -hmm. um, and then Romans 12 and two, be not confirmed to mm -hmm. this world, but mm -hmm. be transformed by the renewing of mm -hmm. our mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I know we did a lot of things. Um, you know, in the world, um, in a certain way, but when we come in and we say that we are Christ, now we have to start following his mm -hmm. stuff. And it's not because we've grown or mature and nobody can tell me nothing. And if I feel like doing it, if I feel like I want to go there, if I feel like I want to sleep in a hotel with someone, if I feel like I want to, you know, we, we can do make which, those decisions, which you can, right? Because the Bible you can, says that because everything, everything is permissible. It's it permissible, beneficial, but everything, right? yes, it is beneficial. So yes, you can, you can do whatever you want, but is it beneficial? So you yes. have to ask yourself that. You know, Amen. who am I benefiting? Who am and I then hurting? It says, um, okay, it says by the renewing of your mind, and um, by doing that, you'll be able to test and approve what looks, um, what's good, what is the will of God, what His will is, um, pleasing and perfect will of God are your actions deeds speech approved by God Philippians 2 and 5 says in your relationship with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus would do so we all have to have that mindset and um lastly I'm just going to end with this there is a song that came to me today and I said I was going to write it down because I wanted to do it. and it's called the war cry and it says devil you can have my mind devil you can't have my soul I belong to God and I'm fighting you back with the power of the Holy Ghost. So we have that Holy Spirit within us, you know, that always let us know that our mindset has to change. You know, God would always, um, you know, like we said before, like the TSA, you know, when you go in the airport and they'd be like, okay, <laughs> you brought a bottle of water and you know you wasn't supposed to bring it, you know. And sometimes I used to just like forget to take it out, not, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. then I will, I will be like, okay, I'll drink it right now. So even though I was full, mm -hmm. I would just drink as much as I could out of the bar. I'll be like, you're not drinking my water. <laughs> Anyhow, but our mindset supposed to be that of God, you know, um, thank you guys for watching again. Um, this is worth the true. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where you can watch this 60, it's this 64, or 65, one of those. I think 64. episode 64. Um, the 64th episode, um, we have so many other series. Each month we try to come up with, with a topic and then we do a subtopic for every week. So this um, topic, um, this series for this month of January is New You, New Year. And um, today we discuss a, mind, a mindset, a new mindset. So next week we'll be talking about a new heart. The following week we will talk about a new relationship and then we will end with a new walk. Amen. Okay. So just spread the word around, watch us whenever you can, or you can watch the replay. Please comment, like, and share that other people can be informed. You never know who is it going to bless. You know, you never know who is it going to help. Amen. I'm just trying to stall a little bit until Tony come back so we can do our logo. Oh, no, she's here. Ah. The battery was low. I said, oh God, this thing will shut off in two seconds. 
If I was pregnant, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> So we just want you to know that you are empowered and you are excellent. And you are enough. And you are especially and dearly loved. You are dearly loved. We love you. Jesus loves you more. Amen. So have a blessed week. I, I, I was under the weather, believe it or not. And I really thought I wasn't going to be able to be here. If you see me had a jacket, it's because I was having chills and I had to even go and put some, my Kula Bura's boots on and, um, you know, to try to like keep myself warm. You know, I'm very congested. I'm supposed to go tomorrow um, to the doctor to get, you know, some few checkup and everything. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't have COVID because I know <laughs> some of you guys, you're mine yeah. already. Yeah. I'm flying there. I already got tested and it was negative. Yeah, um, praise, no praise, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> praise God for that. But um, I, I was determined to still do this, you know, because we are committed. You know, like I said, we are a group of resilient women. We are a group of beautiful, just kidding, <laughs> beautiful women of God. We love God and we love people, like I said, most of the time. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> But anyway, we are still of the flesh. <laughs> yes. Have, we have not ascended. Yet. Yes, <laughs> yes. And changing changing your mindset means that you are going to um deny your flesh more. Yeah. And and become more spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's what changing your mindset really means. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to deny yourself your fleshly wants and needs and um you know, for those of Christ, you're going to do an exchange with with the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. All righty. That was good. I thought I was going to cough. Thank God I didn't cough not one time. I felt so it at one, little, at one point. Alive. You are so alive. You are still yes. alive. You are still oh, I am? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. I want you to. Mm -hmm. <laughs>